So while we're getting ready to get started, I'll go over some just basics. So my name's Maddie. You might have seen me before make videos, um, other tutorials or live Facebook videos. Um, I am an artist in residence at Art with the Heart and Healthcare, and I'm so happy to do another one of these Facebook Lives. It may be hard for me to respond. <laughs> um, it may be hard for me to respond via typing, but that's why I have Miss Brooke through our page responding. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please um, ask them and she will respond or I will respond verbally. I love to give shout outs. So say hi when you log in. Another thing is our donate button is up. So if you feel so inclined to donate to us, that's beautiful, but you just logging is in is amazing as well. We're glad you're here and we're gonna do something fun today. All right, so <clears throat> let's get started. So I'm going to move this hysterical joke off the side and just show you what pro or, um, mediums or, or um, supplies we're gonna need today. So they're all right here. We got my water cup off to the side here. We got a paintbrush. So I don't know where I put the paintbrush from this watercolor set, but they usually are about this size, so that's good. Um, they usually come a little bit pokey, I guess you could say, or flat. One second. So this is a good size brush. Just because we're gonna make some details, I'll show you in a second. We have our Model Magic pack, and I cheated a little bit. I already opened this, because if you've ever used these, you know that they can be a little, to be a little difficult to open. So mine's already open, but you need one of these or just some Model Magic. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we have our watercolor paints. Uh, all this stuff is from our art to go bags. So uh, if you're familiar with those, we have red and blue ones. These supplies are in um, one or both of those. So if you need them, ask your child life specialist. They will be happy to get you those supplies. All right, so put that off to the side. Obviously a napkin is always good. And we have our drawing pad. I feel like I use this every time. If not to create pieces on, then to help with messes or put our sculptures on to dry. So we're just gonna take one of those pieces out and leave them. So let's bring in our piece. And I love, my mom helped me set this up. Also, I'm gonna note, I'm at my parents' house in Orlando and I'm having the best time with them. I can smell pork and sauerkraut cooking right now. So I've been very loved on while I'm here. So shout out to them. My mom helped me design this set today with all the lighting. So this is our piece. This is our surreal piece we're making. It is a melted clock. So this is inspired by Salvador Dali. If you don't know anything about him, he's quite a fun, kooky, wild guy that you should look up. Made me learn some facts about him. I'll, I'll read some facts today though. So I have it here placed on this clock, which my mom had the great idea of doing. This can also be sitting on a table or something. It's really just a fun little eclectic piece to put somewhere where there's an edge, um, if you will. And I will show you at the end, or I'll show you how to do everything. But I just wanted to show you how it looks like this, but you can hang it off of a table or whatnot at the end, once it's all done and dry. So, I'm gonna put that off to the side, maybe over here. And I might, I might have the clock just down here. See, it looks kind of funky if it's not hanging on something. It's kind of got that weird angle and you can't really tell. But I'm just gonna put it here so we can kind of, at least it's in the shot so you can see what we're making. All right, so the first thing I wanted to go over with everyone is what is surrealism? Because it's kind of a, a abstract, idea or movement of art so I wanted to read to you what it is and then maybe break it down so it's easier for all of us to understand so surrealism is a modern movement in art and literature that tries to express the subconscious mind all right so that's already a lot but let's just dive a little deeper surrealism originated in the late 1910s and early 20s as a literary movement. So it started out 
with it with literature first or writing and this movement experimented with a new mode of expression called automatic writing. So if you've ever done this before in journaling, kind of like a stream of consciousness, you just write whatever comes out of your brain right away. You just keep writing, writing, writing. Um, so this, they did this um, to release kind of the imagination in their subconscious. So, wow, that's a lot of big words. It's um, quite a big concept to understand, but we're gonna break it. I'm gonna try to break it down so it's easier to understand. So what does that mean? Think of it like creating a piece of art using images that may be tucked back in your mind. Images that may reference actual people, places, or things, but are obscured or made to look silly in some way. So that could be a melted clock. You know, we've all seen a clock before, but rarely do we see them melted, if ever. Um, a zebra with legs as tall as a skyscraper. A green banana. It's like you're making a piece of art that's from out of your dreams. So think about that. When you're dreaming, you think of things that you see in real life, but they look kind of weird. So that's kind of the idea of surrealism. So going from there, let's get started. I'm gonna grab my piece of paper and I'm gonna grab my model magic. And like I said, you may need help opening this, so get someone to help you if you need it. And you're gonna open this. And we're gonna get out our fun foamy clay. So this project I feel like is easier than it may look and I will break everything down for you. Honestly, you don't really need the paper right now. I'm gonna put it right here. Cause I'm just gonna mess around with my model magic and kind of get it warmed up in my hands, get a feel for it. If you've never played with model magic, it's a lot of fun. Great thing about model magic is you don't need to bake it in the oven. Uh, you don't need to even leave it out in the sun. It will dry in the air. So for example, my piece, I made it and then I left it out overnight and by the next day it was pretty much dry. The inside might've been a little wet, but I just picked it up and, and dried it another angle and it was dry. So it dries fairly quick. And today we are gonna paint on our quote unquote wet clay. It's not really wet, it's m just malleable still, but we're gonna paint on it while it's still malleable. Sometimes you, it's nice to wait until it's dry, but we can do it while it's, it's still moldable today. And thank you, Amber, for donating $5. That makes a big difference. All right, so whenever I'm making something out of model magic or clay, I look, about, look at the, the portions you're gonna need of the model magic for each piece. So obviously the biggest part is gonna be the back of our clock, right? Because that takes up the most space. So I'm going to pull apart, I'm gonna say maybe like two thirds to one third. I think something like that. Let me see here. I'm trying to think, maybe a little more. All right, so it's kind of hard to explain this portion. You're gonna have two pieces. One, it, they're not exactly um, equal size. One has a little more, and that's gonna be our, our, the back of our clock face. So I'm gonna put the smaller piece off to the side here, and I'm gonna work with our larger piece. It's not too much bigger, but. So I'm going to use my um, surface here and roll it around. If you've ever played with clay or model magic, I feel like everyone does this, or Play-Doh, you know, to make a ball. You can do it with your hands as well. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I'm doing is you can see they, they clay or model magic get these little cracks. So I'm just trying to get rid of as much of that or those as I can. All right, so I don't see too many more, too much cracks in it anymore. So what I'm gonna do next is start molding this. So a regular clock, or 
if you think about it, this clock maybe originally looked like a circle, but the idea that it's melted made it stretched out like this. So what I'm gonna do is take my fingers and just start smushing it down. If you want it to be a little flatter, you can use your paper also too to like smush it so it's it doesn't have as much of your fingerprints, if that makes sense. But I'm just gonna keep smushing, smushing, smushing. So remember, the idea is it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be a circle. In fact, you don't want it to be a circle. And it doesn't have to look just like this. But if you ever think about something dripping, it goes from a larger surface to almost a more, a thinner stretched out surface, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna kind of go with that. Let me see, it kind of looks like an ear right now. So it's kind of looked like almost a stretched out ear. If, as silly as that sounds. So I'm gonna give mine a little personality, kind of bending it at some points. So think about if this was just dripping off something, you know, it looks something like that maybe. So I'm gonna to try to even out the sides some and maybe Flatten it a little bit. How is everybody's Monday today? In Orlando, it's been a little rainy, but I got a good walk in with my dad, so that was nice. So I'm gonna flip this around, and it kind of reminds me of pizza dough or something. And I'm using a paper bottom right now, which makes it stick a little bit. You might have more um, luck if you use a hard surface. Like I said, even though it kind of looks funky, but that's totally okay. I'm just gonna remold it. And it's melting, so it's gonna look weird. All right, so we've got a very peculiar shaped clock. Soon to be clock, or stretched out ear, whatever you want you wanna call it. All right, so let's look back at our clock and see what else we need to make. So take note of everything else. We have the rim of our clock, this gold part that goes all the way around the outside. We have the hands of our clock here. And then we have this little knob on the top of our clock, which would be used to set the clock. So we have those three elements. So we're gonna, again, kind of look at how much you need for each. So you're probably gonna need the most amount of model magic for the rim of your clock. So I'm gonna go over here to my smaller piece and we're gonna kind of section this off. So, I'm gonna say that is gonna be the rim. Let's see if this looks like enough or not enough. That's gonna be the top of our clock. I might get a little bit more from the rim or the frame of the clock, either way. All right, so this is gonna be the hands. This is the little top, put those over the side. We're gonna first focus on the frame. All right, so the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna roll it in a ball again, so you can use your hands or the flat surface or the hard surface. And what's another thing we always do usually when we have clay? We make it into a long spaghetti or a snake, right? So we're gonna do that again. So you're gonna use your hand like a rolling pin in a way. So just slowly rolling this out. <clears throat> Let's see here. So I'm gonna read some facts or fun facts. Actually, the first one's not a fact. I think it's more of just um, a theory or an idea. Um, so why did Dolly paint melted clocks? It seems like he uses that a lot if you ever look at his work. So a lot of people think that the clocks represent 
time, which escapes us while we're sleeping, that they lose power, that clocks lose power in the dream world. So think about it. When you're sleeping, very rarely are you considering what time it is, how much time has passed. As a matter of fact, most likely you fall asleep and you wake up and it feels like it was like that. Sometimes we wish it was longer. But so that's kind of the idea. Time almost stops or it's not part of our dream world, right? I don't even know if I've ever seen a clock in my dreams. Maybe I have, but it's something I, I don't ever consider while I'm dreaming is what time is it. So that's, I think that's the kind of idea maybe he was going for. That's just speculation. Who knows? All right. So this is another thing I did for the frame because I didn't want to put it on to my clock right away because it would stick. So I kind of went around the outside first to see how much more I needed. So obviously I need to go a lot more or I need to roll this out a lot more since I'm a little over halfway there. Of course, if you're putting it a little further away from the inside of the clock, um, you're gonna make it, need, need to make it not as long. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm just rolling this out very slowly. You'll notice that most art, especially art that you love and appreciate, requires patience and time. So don't rush stuff like this. You know, take, take it slow, slowly get the frame rolled out. So let's see where we're at now. Still got some ways to go. Okay. We're getting there, guys. Looks like I got an extra long worm, or I guess like a night crawler. Is that what they're called, I think, or something? Whoop. So it's a little bit of a rainy day here, and What's the best activity to do inside while it's rainy? Art. That's right. All right, so now that I've, I've got a significantly lo longer um, worm for my frame, I'm gonna start at the top where this little knob is gonna go because then it's easier to disguise when I put that on top of it. So I'm gonna start at the top of my clock, right in the middle, about right there. So I'm just gonna go around the outside with that, pressing it against. Super easy, right? Come on, that's so easy. And then we're gonna, I have that little <laughs> extra piece of my worm and I'm gonna take that off, just pinch it off right there. Cause we can use that somewhere else. I think the first time I did this, I even had leftover model magic. So that's kind of nice. Sometimes some projects require more, but you only really need that one packet for this. All right, so now we got that going. Let's see, we can put in our little knob that's gonna go on the top here. So I have this put aside, remember? Again, we're gonna use our hands or the table to make a little ball. And so uh, you're gonna make it look a little more dynamic than just that ball or a little different. So it almost looks like, hmm, almost like, I'm trying to think, like a cone, like a soft cone shape almost on the top. So if I have it in my hands like this, I'm just gonna take my fingers and almost pinch the top of it around the top of that little knobby, like so. And honestly, clocks can be very ornate very detailed, so you can do even more detail. You'll see I added more detail when I, I painted it. So we're gonna do that, but it's gonna look something like this. I'm trying to see if you can see that a little better. Or it kind of looks like a spinning top or something if you went upside down, but it's gonna go this way. So I'm gonna connect that now to my clock. And remember where I started and ended? my frame, that's where I'm gonna put that. 
So I'm gonna use my fingers to kind of just mold it in there, oh, just down at the base of that. So if you think about it, if it's a clock, this is the thing that you would um, pull up and turn to adjust your clock setting or your time. So that's that, it's just a fun little detail. All right, so we got this interesting shape going on right now. Last thing we have to do before we paint is the hands of our clock. So I did this the first time, and I think the first time I put the circle or this little circle part in the middle, but I found it's better to do after because you can put the hands down and then layer that on top so that it looks a little more neat. So this is my remaining model magic. So we're gonna do our fun little worm thing again. I'm gonna put aside a little bit of MM, a little bit of model magic on the side just for that circle in the middle of our clock when we get there. I'm gonna do it a little less maybe. And, all right, so what it, all clocks or most clocks they have two hands, and one is shorter and one is longer. The shorter hand is our hour hand, shows us what hour it is, and the longer hand shows us what minute it is. So we're gonna make a shorter and a longer clock hand. So let's see here, I'm gonna do maybe that much, maybe that much. Like I said, you might have leftovers, I did. So put this off to the side. Circle, I feel like most things I start or that start with clay, you start almost with that smoothed out circle just so you can smooth out all the cracks. Now I'm gonna roll it like this, like, I, like we did our worm. It's gonna be another little worm. So it gets a little tricky. You gotta kind of figure out where you're gonna put it. Let's see here. A fun thing to do if you're gifting this to someone is maybe pick a time that's important to the person or to you. I'm having fun right now, so I'm gonna do this time. So I think it's 5.24. Yep, so we'll do like a little around 5.24-ish by the time I get to it. Oh, so before I put this down, we're gonna make this fun little detail for the clock hand. I'm going to make this worm a little more thin on one end and keep it thick on one end. And the reason is because this top part, I'm gonna smush down and kind of pinch. So I'm making almost like, it looks like a lemon shape at the end, if that makes sense. So, Let's put this one, I said this one was shorter, but feel it out, this one might be the longer one. So if it's a 24, 524, let's see, that's 25. You, can, you know what else you can do, which is pretty smart, I just thought of using this, placing it where the clock hand would be, bringing it up, and then if it's too far up, just pinch that little bit off, there you go. I really think that the biggest, um, I think people, people assume that people who are good artists are naturally good artists, but I think it's more about people being able to problem solve. I think a lot of creative, creative people are problem solvers. They can see something and figure it out. So little things like this, you know, I didn't think of that before, but I was like, oh, well, I can just start down here, put that where, and then pull the rest off. There we go. Okay, so let's do our hour hand. Rolling it out again. Like this. So you can see I'm smushing it again. So it's a little thinner down here and then I'm smushing to make this like lemon lime sort of shape with, that's pointed at the end. All right, so we're doing five. Ooh, this is gonna be an interesting one. 
Hmm. I might do it up here. I might do it at another angle just because I'm scared it would be too overlapped if it's down that way. So we're gonna do another time. Let's do 11, 25. So again, I'm just pointing it up to the direction I want. Bringing it down, pinching off, whoop, that one little piece. So you can kind of reshape and remodel. So I'm gonna work on, um, actually let's put, you know what, while we're doing it, let's finish off the hands. We're gonna put <clears throat> our last little dot. Remember our circle, so that's in the center right here. So I'm gonna smooth that out, make a little circle, it's a little much. This is almost exactly the amount I had left over last time too, so must have been using the same portions. Making a little circle, smushing it a teeny bit, putting it right in the middle of those clock hands. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now, or as of now, I might just mess with it a little bit, like the hands, just to get them a little more smoothed out. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna read you a fun fact. Um, I had no idea about this, but in 1945, Salvador Dali and Disney Studios teamed up and started making an animated sh uh, short film. And it's called Destino, which means destiny in Spanish. So I discovered this the other day and I watched it and it is super neat especially if you're interested in learning more about Dolly's works. It's a little more appropriate for kids because it is Disney. So it's really fun um, to watch with your family. Uh, let's see, um, more fun facts about that. Yeah, it was um, started in 1945. It had to stop because of World War II, but it was finished um, obviously much later and then, um, or started and then finished again in, um, in 2003. So. You should look it up. I found it easily the other day. It's a really cool, uh, fun little short film. All right, so we have the basics of our clock sculpture. Very cool. We have this other little piece, do whatever you want with it. The other day I made a little hat for my finger. You know, have fun. Um, you can add, I mean, you could figure out something else to add to your clock, make it a little more ornate. Just mess around with it or maybe use all of it. So anyways, I'm just gonna put this off to the side because it's not needed. I'll use it for something else. Let me make another little finger hat. All right, so fun. next fun part we get to do is our painting. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab my napkin, my paintbrush that I said is a great size. Most watercolor, sets come with a brush like this, close to like this, so. And this is my watercolor paints. Awesome, oh, of course my water cup. <clears throat> All right, so I just kind of followed the color scheme for this, for Dolly, the um, persistence of memory, which is kind of what this references um, oh, another fun fact that I didn't realize I wanted to, uh, I, I don't know the exact dimensions, but always in my mind, all growing up, I thought that this famous piece of art, the persistence of, persistence of memory was this huge piece. I don't know why I thought it was like the size of a wall or something. It turns out it's so tiny. I mean, comparatively to what I thought. So you should look up how big that piece is, the, persis the Persistence of Memory by Dolly. I'm sure you're gonna be surprised at how much smaller it is than what you probably actually think. Um, but yeah, that was kind of fun to find out. So anyway, I got my nice watercolor set, set. I think this comes in the red bag, but they have some in the blue bag as well. Woo, got some water falling out of it already. Been using them. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna stick with the color scheme of this, or like I said, if you looked up Persistence of Memory by Dolly, this is kind of this color scheme of the clocks. So the clock face is blue. If you wanna change any of the colors up, by all means, please do. This is your work, it's not mine. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush. I have some water already in my um, paints, but I usually like to wet them. So if you haven't done it already, wet each one. I'm gonna just put a little more, woo, that blue is 
gloopy. It is sticky. So when I made this the first time, this is a, a tip you should stick with. If you are um, doing all of the painting right now or all at the same time, the clock face, whatever color you do it, you want to make a thin layer of paint. Very thin, mixed in with a lot of water because you want it to dry as quick as possible. So by the time we get to the numbers, the numbers won't be all fading into the background because it will happen if there's too much water. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. I like to use this back of our watercolor palette for like a mixing palette. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that blue, just smush it around on there. Maybe get some more water. So the idea is I'm kind of watering this down. So initially when I put this onto my clock face, it probably will be kind of watery, but you just keep spreading it out. So you can see it's pretty watery, but all I'm gonna do is keep spreading it out. So I'm just going into that background clock face color. And I'm just spreading that paint, spreading, 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 until it almost looks like it's dried. And I can go back in with some of that pure pigment or pure paint. Pigment's just another word for paint here or color. And I can layer some of that. But what you wanna just keep doing, like I said, is pushing the paint around so that you're, you're, you're making it, or you're making it um, easy to dry. You don't want it to take forever to dry once we get to that last detail where we put our numbers in. So I hope everyone's doing okay out there, following along all right. Remember if you know someone who hasn't seen this yet, but they wanted to, all of these go back onto our Facebook page so you can watch them at a later date by yourself, with your family, with your friends, whatever. So I'm gonna keep going and adding. that pigment, that watered down pigment. Like I said, I'm spreading and spreading. It's important to not put too much. You, you, can, you can, honestly, if you wanted to make this super bright and a lot of paint, you can do that, but you would need to let it dry first and then go back and put the details in because those numbers will get washed out or start to blend and bleed into your background color. Dad, are you following along in there? No? So my dad's been really enjoying all of the Facebook Live tutorials we've been making, right dad? I think he's distracted. All right, so I'm gonna hold that up so you can kind of see it a little closer. It's pretty glossy. It's so funny, it almost looks like a, feels like a pancake almost. <laughs> kind of looks and feels like a pancake right now. So our next step is going to be coloring our beautiful clock frame. Um, so this is kind of a gold color and I'm gonna show you how I made that. Cleaning off my brush, looks like some blue Powerade right now. Cleaning off my brush. All right, for the gold, put some water down, orange, yellow. Ooh, this is super gloopy paint. So orange, yellow, and brown will probably do the trick. And then it's just uh, the portions of that. So it's a little more brown than I want right now. So I'm going to clean my brush off a little, go back in and grab some orange and a lot of yellow. I got some green in my yellow still, but 
I think we can make it work. So again, I'm going to do what I did with the clock face. I'm going to make this pretty thin, not super thin, but thin enough so it won't take forever to dry. Do want a little more of that, that yellow, that yellow. Okay. So for this, I'm pretty sure I held it. So, hmm. You know what, what we're gonna do? We're gonna hold it just for this part, the top little knob part, and then I might actually put it down just so I can get behind that knob. All right, so. Now I'm gonna put it down, and this is where our paper comes in handy, especially if you haven't been using your paper yet, you'll be able to move it around more. Also, the paper that we're using, I usually save old paper that I've made some marks on that I don't wanna throw away just because it's wasteful. So you can keep pieces of paper to have your doodle papers or like your messy papers. All right, so what I'm gonna do is paint this frame. And you wanna get as close as you can to the clock face and then take it as far down as you can on the sides. Whoop. If you get a little on the clock face, it's all good. We can go back with blue. But I'm gonna do that all the way around the outside here. Let me see. So I'm just using that color I mixed. So while I'm doing this, I'll read the next fun fact about Dolly. Dolly was known to be somewhat of a con man. So that sounds pretty harsh, but I read some stories and they're, they're comical, but he did like to pull one over on people once in a while. And one story that seemed to come up quite often was a story about him and Yoko Ono. If you don't know who Yoko Ono is, ask your parents, they probably do know. But Dolly was friends with John Lennon as well, her husband, Yoko Ono's husband. And what happened was she asked, so obviously this is at a time when he's been famous for a while, she asked him, if she could buy one of the whiskers of his famous mustache. So if you don't know what Dolly looks like, after this, don't leave me now, but after this, go look up a picture of him. He has a pretty epic mustache that he's famous for. It's almost like two little spirally whiskers or whiskers that come off the end and, and curl around. It's really fun. So, let's see here. So, Yoko Ono asked him to buy one of his or whiskers from his mustache, his famous mustache. He agreed and he said he'd do it for $10,000. And what he ended up sending her was a dried up piece of grass in a very beautifully presented box. And that is the story. And I think it's pretty hysterical. Um, but yeah, I think apparently he liked to, he was a, he was a bit of a trickster. I thought that was super interesting. I had no idea about that until I researched a little more about him. All right. So we're just painting our way along, getting close to the end. And you'll see once I get to the end, I actually usually like to pick this up or my piece up and move it over just so it doesn't get so stuck from the paint. Sometimes the paint will start to act as a glue once it starts drying. All right, so let's see. All right, it's looking pretty good. So like I said, 
I just do this because I don't want it to stick too much. I'm gonna pick it up underneath, kind of wiggle my fingers underneath there, move it over to the side, move our little clock pancake over. All right. So next we're gonna do our, um, our hands, our clock hands. And the reason is it just gives our clock face and our frame a little bit more time to dry before we add those other details. <clears throat> Cleaning off my brush of that gold. We're gonna be using black now. And this one, um, what's this called? Color Swell. I don't know if that's a brand, Color Swell. Watercolors is the ones we're using, I think, in our red art bags right now. These are surprisingly great. Uh, I thought they, I, I don't know, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect. Um, one thing I love about this watercolor set is the black is actually true black. And if you've ever, worked with black pigment, especially watercolor. If you water it down, it usually has an undertone of green or, bl or blue. And this is pretty true black. So that was nice to discover. I don't, sometimes if it's, it's too blue, I have to add a little bit of orange or too green. I have to add a little bit of red to, to balance it out. This is pretty pure black. So I always, I still am gonna use this over here, my little mixing tray, if you will. So since the, the, the black details we're going to do, first we're going to do the clock face and then the numbers in the frame, this black can be a little thicker only because it is the last detail and last pigment and paint we're going to put on. So it's going to sit on top. Since nothing's going to go over it, uh, this, this can be a little thicker. I'm still adding some water to it, obviously. You need a little water to thin it out. And sometimes I'll mix my... or get the right consistency, consistency. And I like to do this thing where I spin my paintbrush on my napkin, so it gets it super pointy, if you can see that. So, and it gets off all the extra paint that's almost waiting. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. You start painting and that little gloop or, or drop of paint water comes down and it sabotages your work. So I do that to get off the excess and make it really pointy and then go back. And there we go. So. I'm gonna go into my clock hands right now. And we have that circle. So I've noticed that using the watercolor on the model magic does take longer to dry. So keep note of that. I haven't tried it yet using um, a hair dryer. That might work, but I'm just painting that in. Just the clock hands. So I'm not going way too far down the sides. I'll go a little bit, but I'm trying to avoid that black getting on the blue. So that's my hour, hour hand. And let's do our minute hand. I want the minute hand to be a little pointier. They don't come in the art bags, but you can buy really affordable tools, clay or, or clay tools, which you can use for model magic. We have them in the hospital in our cabinets, but you can get them for pretty affordable at most craft stores or you know, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Amazon. And you can get them for pretty affordable. The plastic ones, at least I know. And those are good for tiny, like I was trying to, to, to mold this little tiny detail down here of my clock hand. So those tools help with stuff like that because they can get into those little spaces. And they're fun to experiment with. All right, so filling up here. So I'm using watercolor. If I was using something other than watercolor or I had other stuff other than watercolor, you could use tempera paint. Acrylic paint will work great for this, especially if you molded it first and then painted it. 
I guess any paint would be good for that. It it would be probably beneficial to have your your clock. You can definitely mold it first to the table and after it dries, take it and paint it. That might work pretty well, but just for the sake of time and showing you everything, I'm doing it while it's still wet. And it worked out really good. I was su surprised in a way. So, all right. So I'm still going to give the clock face a little more time to dry. It's pretty dry, um, but I'm going to do the details in or on the frame right now. So I don't think it's necessarily like this in his paintings per se, but they give it a fun, almost painted look. How I did these quick brush strokes of black and then we can do the details in our little knob at the top. So this is where our paper comes in handy too because we can turn it around. So I'm just gonna do little brush strokes like so. So they're gonna be long and short. Don't overthink it. Just a nice little, like I said, it almost looks makes it look a little more artful, if that makes sense. Maybe it's like the shadows, or you know, a way to make it almost look shiny. So I'm just doing those little brush strokes all the way around. So this is like I said, where your paper comes in handy because you can turn it around. And I'm going to, let's see if you can see this. So I'm going to make little circles around. So remember I said this kind of looks like, almost like a spinning top, but upside down. I'm gonna make little circles around the top, like a couple little circles, woo. Like I said, mine is not perfect here. Let me show you. I don't even get all the way to the bottom. That's okay though. It's gonna be draped over something. And then, so if you think about it, the little knob on the top of a clock it almost has those vertical lines that texture I can just feel like the metal the little uh lines of the metal so I'm gonna do little vertical lines like this along as much as I can to the back you could lift it up but I don't think it's really necessary because no one's gonna see under there anyway all right so the last <clears throat> piece or part of this we're gonna make our numbers. I noticed that in a lot of his clocks, he has the dashes in between. I didn't put those on. You can, if you want to get even more detail, it's totally up to you. I'm just going to put the numbers in for today. So I kind of looked at his numbers for reference on what kind of style of numbers I'd want to do, or I guess it'd be like a kind of font, like a number font. So you can make them however you want, but I'm going to try to mimic this again. So we got our 12 at the top. We got our one o'clock. We got our two o'clock. So this is interesting. My clock hand is up here at 11, pretty much on top of where the 11 would be. So you can do one of two things. You can put it below or above, or you can kind of make it look like it's covering it up a little bit. So I'm gonna do that and see how it works out, right? Why not? So we got that one and then the other one ah, is underneath it. So I tried it, it's a little funky, but it's a melting clock, so whatever. All right. So you can keep going down the line. I actually, kind of, well, the first time I did that, I lined it up as I went down so they were somewhat in the right spot, if that makes sense. So instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, I went, you know, 12, one, 11, two. So you'll see what I mean. So after 11, we got our 10 underneath. So you can kind of line it up across 10 o'clock. Nine o'clock. Ooh. We got a 
three o'clock. So also you wanna think about if it's melting, the numbers might be at a different spot. So it, they may not be right across. So you can see my original 11 and one are lined up. And then, you know, the two and the 10 coin art and then the three and the nine definitely aren't because it's melting on this side. So like I said, it does not have to be perfect. You want to have a little character. All right, so let's see where we stop. So the four would be down here, totally covered by our clock hand. So we're just gonna go with that. I'm gonna put eight here. We got our seven. So I'm gonna say the five is covered up a little by the clock hand, but not all the way like this. If you ever need to, like I gave you that little advice, roll your paintbrush on your napkin to make it pointy again. And let's see, five's got a long, a thick tail there, but that's all right. And then we got our six o'clock at the bottom, of course. There we go. So I'm just gonna go back and kind of make sure all of my numbers look how I want. Last fun fact is not really a fact, but something very cool. If you liked this and you're interested in more Dolly work, there is a Dolly Museum in Florida called the Dolly Museum. And it's located in St. Petersburg, Florida. So it's on the West Coast. Um, and it's home to over 2,400 Salvador Dolly works. This is another cool fact I learned. It, it's named one of the 10 most interesting museums in the world by Architectural Digest. So that means that the building is just a cool building. And it is. I went there when I was really young with my family. And then I didn't go back until probably three years ago. And it is really neat to see his artwork. And then to also just see the building. And they have a cool garden out back. I think it's called the avant garden so it's a really fun place to check out if you're ever around there i highly recommend going there all right guys so i think we have everything we need um obviously the last part you're wondering is how did she get it to bend like this well you're gonna have to let it dry overnight bending over a, a um a counter or an angle in some way like i showed you earlier my mom after it had dried because i think this is kind of a nice clock um put it on here so it's just draped over it so find a place that has um, a countertop and and uh, mold that over it so uh, i'm gonna do that in a second before i do that i just want to thank all of our healthcare workers we love you. We're thinking about you. You mean so much to us. We miss you, especially the ones that we saw daily. If any of you ever want to make art for them, please send it to us, tag us. We will forward it to them. They love it. Uh, we would just love to do that for them. So for the last part, I'm going to show you how to drape it over. I'm going to use my paper here. I'm going to have to take my phone down for a second to show you this last fun part. If I can get it out of my tripod, okay. So you're gonna take your clock. Oh, here, let's see. It says I can't rotate my phone while recording. Okay, back to where I would be. All right, so my clock is still flat. I'm gonna bring this, you can find any place preferably somewhere out of the way so people won't bump into it or mess with it. You're gonna take your clock, your pancake clock, and you're just going to lightly set it down so that part of it drapes over the side like so. So it looks like it's just dripping off the side. Don't put it too far forward or it will fall onto the ground, which you don't want your artwork to do. So make sure. And then also you have a piece of paper. The first time I did this, I did not have a piece of paper. So it did stick to my parents' mantle. So you want a piece of paper so you can easily pick it up. And what I did the next day, I'm gonna show you another angle. So it looks like that. I'm just kind of melting off the side. So 
the next day, pick it up off your paper. It'll probably be mostly dry. It might still be a little wet on the bottom. And then you can take it and turn it like this to dry even further, which I did the last day or so. So that is it, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate, um, like I said, our healthcare workers right now and all the support you're giving us. Thank you again. We love you from Art With A Heart, and we will see you soon. Bye, guys.